the, the key story there that actually leads me on how we should be preparing and developing our managers for the future was once in my office, I was the president and institute senior fellow of Malaysia Blue Ocean Strategy Institute, and my South Korean friend came to me, associate dean, came to me and said, hey Pablo, I have something to tell you. I have a little question, little Asian question to you. I have seen you here for three or four months, and it's something that really amazes me. Why do you operate only in three modes, meaning psychological modes? And when he said that, I was terrified. Because, you know, I'm the product of American business education. So three modes is two more than, than they would allow, you know. Because it's non-transparent, because it's uh, uh, not principled, because it's almost un unethical, and so on and so on. So I was like, uh, you know, I almost kind of squeezed myself and I said, oh my God, three modes. And then he said, no, 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 that's not what I mean. What I mean here in Asia, you need to, to have eight or ten modes. You know, why only three? <laughs> so, see, with the government, you should be, you know, acting like this. With Professor Kim, who, of course, was harassing all of us, you know, you should, be, you should carry his bag. You know, to the subordinates, you should be acting in a, in a completely different way. So, nothing, nothing immoral, nothing unethical, and yet a lot of flexibility. And that's, you know, how I started to train myself, too, you know, into, into this flexible ways of, of dealing in a multinational environment. That's, that's what we all have. That's what we have in this room, in, 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 in actually this forum. Many nations, um, uh, many countries, many continents, many cultures, and you'll have more and more and more like this in the, in the future. And yet, we have still, I'm sorry to say, to say, the kind of, I don't know, Anglo-Saxon or American approach to management education. I'm sure in the three or four or five years, it will be Russian model, it will be Chinese model, it will be the Indian model, American model will still stay, and we need to be flexible between all of them, choosing the best pieces or the most appropriate pieces for this particular situation. Chinese do not listen to any kind of strategy, even including blue ocean strategy. Why? Because they had this, uh, they, they have this book written thousands of years ago, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And Sun Tzu says, you know, there are three qualities of the good general. One is a fighter, which is kind of clear. One is a thinker, which is even more clear because that's what we get from the from, uh, American model of uh, management education. We get the thinkers, you know, analytical thinkers uh, with all the draw advantages and drawbacks that we have already discussed here. And the third was a farmer. You need to be the farmer. Now, here was, I was confused. Why, why the farmer? Fighter and thinker clear, why the farmer? So I approached the guy. And I said, why the farmer? Is that because of diligence, you know, because of planning? You need to plan, you have to be diligent, like on the rice pad. And he says, yes, a bit, but that's not the most important. And then he says, in your language, and he meant Latin, <laughs> in your language, I mean, think about this. Humus and humility have the same root. Humus, the, you know, the ground, the yeah, land, and humility is the same route. So in order to be a good general, you need a lot of humility. And it's something, by the way, they're not very, very good in, in Eastern Europe, as I'm saying. Dr. Adiz is talking about this all the, all the time, too. Our products from business schools are just too snobbish, are just too arrogant. You know, they're just too full of themselves. Uh, and that is the problem. So how to make them more humble so that they can listen to the customers, to the clients, to their employees, to their team members, and so on and so on. So finally, uh, just a little story about my, my older daughter. Uh, she, she studies in the international school, which is the American international school, of course. And uh, one Saturday she comes back and says, you know, we had this Ukrainian language class today. She's Ukrainian, of course. She comes and says, you know, they had this Ukrainian teacher. She's so strange, by the way. You know, she makes us stand up when she enters, and she's really pushy, you know, and she's crying and, I mean, yelling at us. And what is this? And, and, and she's behaving in, in not in American way. I say, wait a minute. I mean, whom am I hearing this from? An American 
you know, you're a great, a big American. You're not American, my, my darling, you know, you're still Ukrainian. So deal with her, deal with her, you know, deal with her in Ukrainian way. But deal with Americans in American way, in American school. Now she learns Mandarin and she, she has the Chinese and she, she has a Chinese teacher who really squeezes her out. And said, so, you know, be smart enough to deal with the Chinese teacher in Chinese way. I think this is probably the key, the key skill that I will take for the 21st century in BRICS countries, you know, how do we develop this mental flexibility yet preserving and keeping our moral and ethical principles. Thank you.